Hello and welcome back to SpeedyNet, where we are having a look at our HQ, where we can see Mr. D McDamage, who is over a hundred years old, but hasn't turned gray yet. I don't know what color wise he uses for his hair, but uh, it must be amazing. <laughs> anyway, even the name is amazing, huh? <laughs> Now, uh, last time, what we did was we set up oil in some place, uh, which was not here. Ew. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, now, we set up uh, oil for the petrol for the town pro growth program that we were uh, setting up over here in this region. This cluster of white on the minimap. Um, if we zoom in a little, it makes more sense. And um, I have noticed a thing. Now, the oil comes from over here, from this very oil well here. Goes all the way over these tracks. And then there is a small oversight on my part. <laughs> because the route the train will take is uh, onwards there. However, there is no track leading directly to it. So what's happening now with the oil trains is rather than being able to cross like that, <laughs> they now go over here towards this station, then turn around to so they reverse lanes to be able to take this very track here and then they are uh, back on the route that they are supposed to take. We need to change that. <laughs> we need to change that now. So, uh, time to fix up some uh, slight oversights from last time. Right, now that should that should fix uh, this. A bit of an expensive bridge to be fair. I mean, building in the water is anything but cheap. But at least we have a solution for the oil trains currently. Or <laughs> I say trains. Uh, in reality, it's just one train. Now, last time we also discovered that we had an extra bauxite mine over here. And another one over here. Both of which we are going to use. Um... However, for this bauxite mine, there is a small issue. Remember how we removed this weird exit track uh, to have it join up here? If we're gonna utilize this, this train station for this bauxite mine, I might want to place those tracks back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not the, you know, like the nicest and the best solution. But it's the best I've got. And uh, to further complicate things, uh, we also need to have entry tracks uh, from over here. And those are a little bit more challenging, to say the least. In fact, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> so yeah, there is that challenge that we need to face. Um, Let's do the exit first and then the entry. Uh, oh, and by the way, um, just as uh, you know, before I continue with building, uh, I was doing some grouping and balancing and uh, things, you know, in between this video and the last. And I did uh, have a look at a lot of the messages that I was getting, because uh, someone in the comments notified me of it. And, um, well, guess what? A lot of the ships that I have here, uh, in use had their distance between uh, destinations being too long. Not really the destination like as the crow flies, but the des uh, or the, the distance as the crow flies, but the distance that they actually need to travel. I don't know how the pathfinding goes, but apparently the length of their distance traveled um, is what determines whether or not you need a buoy or not. And I thought that was just um, absolute, or absolute distance as the crow flies. Well, I was wrong. I learned something today. <laughs> so, uh, 
yeah, you know, I'm gonna, uh, uh, I wanted to point that out, you know, that I have fixed a lot of them, so we should, in theory, see less messages. Also, we have a passenger uh, connection between Drundingworth and Weddinghead Grocer Shop. So, now that you're all up to speed with uh, what I've been doing, uh, let's focus on uh, getting some extra bauxite to our steel mill, shall we? Well, um, am I proud of this? No. Is it functional? Yes. Shall we use it? Hell yes! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, that sums about up what uh, I think of it. Uh, let me also quickly set up the uh, road vehicle stuff that we need for this, because we can't just do it with trains alone. And um, then we're good to bring some extra bauxite to uh, our steel mill and hopefully get a surplus in our supplies. Alrighty, in theory, uh, oh, hold on a second, and here I thought I had, yeah, that's not good, you need to go back, <laughs> I just, I just see what I did uh, wrong there, I forgot to set the cargo type, you must have been yelling at the screen for me, like, damage, no, <laughs> anyway, I caught it in time, um, so having set uh, up this bauxite mine for us to use, I want to move on uh, to the next uh, petrol thingy. Uh, and let me just quickly set the cargo type here. And then this train can be on its merry way. Uh, I was doubting whether or not to use uh, this locomotive or the cheaper diesel one. Uh, it was a little bit like, I don't know, maybe we could get away with the diesel one, maybe not. Um, I was a bit unsure, so I took the safe bet. Um, you know, and the doubt came f uh, of the uh, attractive effort that this electric one just has so much more of. So, you know, that was uh, the, the consideration uh, that I have made. Now guys, um, over here we need to uh, bring this into the fold and we need to think ahead. I think what we should do is uh, we can use this station uh, and I think we should use this station um, and then basically cart in the oil and the uh, bauxite by road vehicle you do accept uh, the petrol though that is a bit of an issue um, not really for the petrol itself I mean that's all fine but more for the uh, engineering supplies which I also want to ferry to the bauxite mine so I think what we're gonna do is uh, this 
two things we can do here. It's a bit, you know, meh. I mean, or we keep this as passengers only, which is kind of necessary seeing how we have coverage on the oil well. It's a bit unfortunate. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll get in a second station and we'll basically have that just uh, tag on the uh, existing one by going on the outside. So we'll basically build it uh, in like an extended line over here. We'll have road vehicles cart in the goods to the station and we'll have the station as the central hub. And I think that if we connect uh, the station up to over here, then we got the best situation because then we can just bring the goods to anywhere we want as the connections are there for both ways uh, no not for both ways oh yeah no they are there for both ways no thank you right yeah I mean I, I, do, I don't have this connection but I do have it over here and that also joins up to both tracks, so... All in all, we're still good. Um, now... That means... You guess it, you're gonna guess it, we have some track building to do. I also think we should take uh, precautions here. And do some passenger uh, setup for the towns and cities over here. Seeing how they're all uh, close to water, uh, I think that for these towns, we can safely use boats. Yeah, boats should be okay. I mean, it's not, it's not like there is anything else here that we want to connect up. So let me set up the passenger stuff first, so we're still in good standing with the cities afterwards, and then set up the stations here. So, more building to do, yay!
Alright, I think, ladies and gentlemen, that all the prep work has been done. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've missed anything. Um, passengers are being generated here, so draining well is. F oh, look at this! All of a sudden, uh, its needs have gone up. Is that because the town is growing and I just don't see it, or is it because the rest of its neighboring towns? And I don't exactly know. Like Wedding Head. When Wending Head, excuse me, Saring Stone and Longford. Longford is over here, so if this is growing, uh, then this gets lower requirements. So, all in all, I think uh, what we should see is a steady increase over here in uh, town growth, which means that, well, um, we got it covered. <laughs> that's uh, that's what it means, you know. Uh, and of course, also the bauxite over here is uh, covered. Now, I'm not entirely sure about uh, capacities and fine tuning of the amount of trains and all that. So we'll have to do that at a later point. I'll probably do that in between videos. Uh, but we got the basics set up. We also have over here an oil well. And this one's rather easy to connect to uh, this station, which is, of course, uh, the right thing to do. And looking at it, yeah, there is a... Every, every connection is in place. We basically only need to connect up a uh, road uh, stop station thingy. <laughs> and uh, then we're good. So let's do that. this set of two uh, I believe that there were oh yeah that there it is I was about to have a look but uh, I, I thought that there were four oil wells over here and man am I right there are indeed four oil wells over here so uh, this is the last one and even though I don't think we really will have any trouble with uh, with this city um, I'm gonna not gamble it and basically um, we're gonna bring Grintown also in the fold whilst uh, connecting up this oil well thingy over here. There's two ways we can go about it. Uh, if I really want to do this the proper way, we'd have this be brought in by road vehicle to a central collection station. Case being though that uh, we only have this oil well here to serve. It seems a little bit pointless. Unless we also use it as a central collection point for passengers from here. I'm not really a fan of that. I'd much rather connect this up directly. But I guess we could give it a go. We also have a hotel there to connect up. We built a station here. And then we have a good enough excuse to... Yeah, I think that's what we need to do. We need to have like a station here, which then connects... I guess to over here with a pass-through option for the tracks, or a pass-by, basically, uh, by Cardingstone Bay right over here. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. All right, more building.
All right, guys, that was uh, a lot less difficult <laughs> than I thought it would be. Uh, we have made a little bit of an enemy in uh, with the town of uh, Grintown and uh, Cardingstone. But for the rest, uh, it's basically all sorted, you know? Everything is running like a charm. I had, however, discovered an error in me setting up the passengers with the transfer option that basically means that the town doesn't get any passengers i mean it does get them now but that is after i have fixed the uh, errors of my ways another thing that i noticed is um just if you look at this and you we go to the oil vehicles I mean, look at the reliability of the Axel Rigel with Tanker Trader. I don't think it gets any more reliable than this, huh? In theory, it should mean that it never breaks down. How good is that? Also, um, we are using our fancy, very new double-decker uh, thingy with the 60 passenger capacity. Now, I don't know if you hear that. Uh, but it just made the acceleration sound and man, <laughs> there is a V8 in this one. <laughs> How good is that? Yeah. yeah, I love it. I mean, it's a bit overkill. This hotel isn't that productive, but still, you know, it's better to have it. Now, as for um, our current uh, situation, we have, if we have a look at the map, I believe that we have connected every single uh, oil well that we had to connect is that right oh yeah i should be looking over here well, that is absolutely right we are bringing this to the uh to the oil uh, refinery here so all that we really need to do here is see uh, that we uh, yeah, that we boost up the production a little bit. I mean, that's all really. But boosting up the production and uh, also getting a slight surplus in uh, engineering supplies over here. And then getting them to the oil wells are all things that we're going to have to figure out next time when we play more Open TTD.